Hello, my name is Reiner Hoff, Chair of the Global Congress on Process Safety, and today I'm going to be interviewing Mr. Wesley Lohek. My guest is the Vice President, Health, Environment and Safety for Chevron Corporation, a position he has had since 2011. <clears throat> Wes, I really enjoyed your presentation on sustaining effective process safety. I have a couple questions for you. Sure. First of all, all too often we see terrific success on new initiatives like ISO 9000 or even process safety, only to see interest and metrics deteriorate after the initial enthusiasm phase ends. How do you keep people engaged? Well, I can tell you what we do in Chevron, and I think first of all it has having a systematic approach, and for us that's through our operational excellence management system. But one key component of that management system is what we call our management system process, sort of our continuous improvement cycle. And as part of that, every year we do a gap assessment of what are our largest gaps. We plan to close those gaps and we come back and review at the end of that year. And by having that systematic, constant annual review, we're always looking back at the, the programs, the processes we rolled out one, two, three or four years ago, gathering information on how it's working, what gaps did we perhaps not address, where was there some miscommunication, and using that continuous improvement cycle to make sure that some of the things we rolled out don't atrophy and, and die or, or, or be unsuccessful, if you will. Sure. Well, that sounds very effective. Of course, the troops have a self-interest in process safety, so one could argue that they are predisposed to effective process safety programs because they benefit from that. However, sustaining process safety programs requires sustaining resources and budgets. How do you make the process safety case to your C-level and board-level colleagues? when inevitable questions arise about what's the right level of funding for this kind of activity. So, a couple things, and I'm not sure I completely agree with the first part of the that. Premise. <laughs> the premise. The premise. And the troops, that because I think the risk you run is, is people at an operating level becoming too familiar with their plan and losing that sense of vulnerability. So our, our learning has been you have to sell the focus on process safety both uh, at the field level, you know, out on the deck, if you will, and at the, the sea level. So it really requires uh, building commitment, building an appreciation, building the business case for both, uh, and really throughout the whole organization. Uh, we did that uh, really about three years ago with a dedicated program that started with our CEO and his direct reports. And it was interesting. We had, you know, some questions. Is this really needed? We're already good at process safety. Do we need to do this? But it didn't take long going through these uh, kind of uh, cascaded engagement sessions to really have everyone on board saying, yes, there is more we need to do on process safety. This is the biggest risk to the corporation that while personal safety is important, the real risk to the corporation, uh, big incidents that today can be a billion dollar or more incident, uh, that gets attention quite quickly. And then also it, it doesn't take long to, to where leaders recognize perhaps that they haven't personally been spending enough time on process safety and they need to shift their focus. And so with that sort of dialogue over time, we found it fairly easy to build that case and have them very engaged and very, uh, uh, with a high degree of commitment with resources to back up that interest. Right. Yeah. Well, that leads perfectly actually to my next question. And this is really about how you see yourself. Do you see yourself as the champion for process safety at Chevron? Or do you see yourself as a facilitator to develop champions in each division or each plant, et cetera? Yeah, it's an interesting question. I, I would have to say no, that I don't really see myself as you know having the, the flag as the person out in front on process safety because it is such a strong partnership between health environment safety, between engineering, between operations, and including maintenance within operations. So within Chevron, at least, it's kind of a always sort of four-person activity. And it's something, to be honest with you, we still struggle with and haven't landed on the exact right model of, uh, you know, organizationally, you know, should there be a process safety organization? Our manufacturing organization has somewhat of that, uh, but uh, it, it's really a shared accountability, I would say, at this point. I wouldn't necessarily say it's the perfect model, and I would advocate that to others, but that's the way we're managing it right now. Right. But it's an interesting question, I think, still to be addressed over time. Well, we have to start somewhere yeah, right, and absolutely. continue to improve. Uh, at this conference, we have over 1,200 people who have made process safety a key component of their careers. What advice would you have for young professionals about opportunities in the process safety field? Well, I think it's a, it's a huge opportunity, and to me, the demand is going to go nowhere but up. 
the expectations from our stakeholders are so clear that you cannot have process safety incidents. So where in the past, you know, 10, 20, 30 years ago, you could have a process safety incident, go through and repair and get back online and the things would die down in the community and there might not be much uh, ongoing impact to you. In today's world, where your license to operate is a very real thing, whether there's a single piece of paper that holds that license, uh, the, the cost of incidents, the ability to have business continuity are so important uh, that, that we have to get smarter and more capable on process safety and we need the engineers, the operations people with that expertise that, that want to make a career out of it. Uh, that I think absolutely it's a, a bright career. And I think that our really need our universities to do more uh, to have those process safety specialties than they do now. And there's several that are doing quite well in advancing those curriculum. But uh, yes, certainly I would encourage uh, anyone in university now to, there's, and because the, the industry is so broad where process safety is applicable, whether it's petrochemicals or even biomedical activities or um, you know, the manufacturing, refining, or upstream, it's, you know, the process safety is applied everywhere, so, and, and the expectations will be greater and greater. Great. Well, Wes, thank you for meeting with us today, and thank you for your contributions to process safety. My pleasure.